Hey, Empowered Badass Breeders. I want you to stop listening to this nonsense right here. Stop letting shame, guilt, judgment, anything, any of those feelings that make you sick to your stomach when you hear this, I want it to stop today. I am so tired of people saying, other breeders saying, you're not doing it right if you make money. You're greedy, There's, you shouldn't be making money. I am here today to say if you're doing it right, you should be making money. And maybe those breeders need to figure out how to run their business better. Maybe they're not asking the value for their dogs correctly. Maybe they're bad with money. I don't know. I don't know them and honestly, I don't care. But what I do know is if you do it right, it's very expensive from buying good breeding stock to raising them to evaluating them to having a pregnant mom, to delivering puppies, to caring for newborns, um, then raising them on a curriculum, doing puppy evaluations, all the while doing social media, website, taxes, accounting, grooming, ev everything that we're expected to do, but yet we're not supposed to make money, and if we do, we're bad? Just think about this for a minute. So I'm supposed to go get another full-time job to support my breeding program. So how am I supposed to work full time and do everything I need to do for my puppies out every day? So if that's what people are saying, then the, our puppies are not gonna get what they need. Now I know some of you balance it really nicely. You don't have that many litters. Your job uh, lends itself nicely to be able to raise a litter at the same time. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I'm saying as a whole, it needs to stop the shame and the bullshit excuse excuse and attack and trolls that say if you make money you're a bad breeder and only breeders not making money are doing it right it's the most ridiculous asinine thing I've ever heard you're worth it your dogs are worth it I don't see anybody else working for free and we shouldn't either do it right have high standards do it as a business be professional have transparency and honesty in your program and have good dogs and dang it that is valuable and you should make money so that's it I don't want to hear it anymore and I don't want you to feel bad about it anymore and those people sitting there saying if you did it right you shouldn't make money they need to take a hard look on why they're not making money and I could probably surmise like I've already said a few things exactly why they're not and they're more than welcome to take my classes buy my book and see how they can elevate their program to another level where maybe they can charge the value of their puppies and what they're worth um, but there's lots of different ways to run a business and there's no business out there that's not making money and we shouldn't either we should not not be making money all right so Let's just get that cleared and out of the way. You're valuable, you're worth it, your time matters, the love and sacrifice you put into your program matters, the quality of your puppies matter, all the health testing and curriculum and evaluations you do matter and you should be paid for it, period. Today's reminder that stop comparing yourself to other breeders and or try not to get stuck in this negative cycle and I think a lot of it comes from social media so at the end of the day this is my reminder to you right now to take a honest look at maybe groups you're in that every time you go in them you feel like crap or every time you try to post a question you feel like crap because I'll tell you and maybe you've noticed or not I'm not in any other breeder group other than our own private uh, badass breeder education <clears throat> private group where we have moderators and we work really hard and they work they volunteer their time for free to keep our group as safe as possible because here at the end of the day this is the problem it doesn't matter if you breed purebred someone's gonna find a problem with what you're doing it doesn't matter if you're breeding doodles someone's gonna find a problem with what you're doing and throw shade it doesn't matter if you downbreed they're gonna throw shade it doesn't matter if you're brand new and you're asking a question that people might think is dumb or how dare you not know this they're gonna throw shade it doesn't matter if you f do everything right they're going to throw shade so here's my reminder to you know your worth stay true to your mission have integrity have good morals and values be making the right decisions honor and respect your dogs and don't worry about the and noise from other people 
Put your shield up. Protect yourself from that. I have been victim to it. I have. And so that's why I'm telling you this is your reminder. I get so, I used to get so caught up on the hate messages or I'd ask a question and, and the, the judgment and the opinions and I just finally had to make a decision for myself to kind of put some blinders on, remove myself from those groups and those toxic environments where there's just nothing but no matter what you say, someone's going to throw shade, remove myself from those environments and really focus on at the end of the day, looking myself in the mirror and being, am I okay with this? Would I buy this dog? Do I, it's it's on me. Will I stand by my two year warranty guarantee? Well, are my dogs doing good things? Are my clients happy? We put too much power in other people's opinions when they mean nothing to us. We don't even, we, you might not even know them. They don't even know you. And we're worried and stressed about their opinions of us, our program, our dogs. So, this is my Friday reminder to you to kick off this weekend with reducing some of that noise for your mental health and for your dogs and for your program. And don't look back. Quit putting any weight on other people's opinions, especially when you they don't even know you and you don't even care about them. <laughs> Block, ignore, remove, and move forward. March on, my power badass breeders. You've got this. What happens when you get that mom during delivery that's over exuberant in eating the placenta and the cord and the fear is, um, unfortunately, them pulling on the cord so much so that it does rip open the abdomen of the newborn leaving the intestines exposed, uh, which is a very, very bad prognosis for your newly born healthy puppy. It can turn like that and it's devastating, quite frankly. Um, so if you have an overly exuberant mom that's just gung-ho about the placenta, the cord, and the other thing that can happen when they're just so um, exuberant, in that is they can get a tail or a foot in the chewing and the chomping. So we absolutely step in with these moms and help settle them down. Um, we'll, as soon as we can, we'll pinch the cord, you know, about two inches, about two inches away from the abdomen. We'll hold on to that sucker and I will not let any tension on that. So the mom's all gobbling and grabbing the placenta over here. And I'm just holding on for dear life. Uh, cut that on the other side opposite of the puppy. So you clamp, the placenta is over here, cut on the side of the placenta. You can tie off or sometimes you don't even have to once you pinch for a minute, cut. Let the exuberant mom take care of the placenta and you make sure that that puppy's abdomen and uh, cord are safe. Um, with moms though, they can still be quite focused on the cord and still try to pull even after everything. With those moms, I either distract, try to give them something else to do, um, or I'll just give them a uh-uh. No, you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna keep biting at the cord. So a correction or some kind of distraction, they need to just be settled down a little bit. They're, they're over exuberant. Uh, the other thing too, they can choke on a placenta. They don't even chew it. They're just like, oh, they're just so, good grief, calm down, mom. Um, so it's just trying to relay that energy, like chill. Part of it, I don't know if, I'll just be honest, um, some of it's just personality. Do they eat that way? Uh, all the time they act like they're starving and there's never enough and they inhale their food. That could be a sign that they're gonna be that same way at delivery. Or they are, they're just not quite happy you're there. <laughs> so you have to take that into account. So you have to command some presence and let them know it's fine. I'm not taking your puppies. You'll be able to do all this, but this is the way it will be done. Matter of factly, because if you haven't had it happen, I have uh, having a perfect healthy puppy and within a second, the intestines are out in your hand or on the whelping box or inside the mom's mouth. 
it can go horrific in a, in a second. So I'm not trying to alarm you, but just, just be very matter of fact. Don't hesitate at all. Have a lot of good, strong presence. Let the mom know it's fine, but this is the way it's going to be done. I'm grabbing the cord. I'm cutting the cord. You take care of the placenta. This is teamwork, girl. We've got this. The, and uh, we're going to keep your puppies healthy and we're not going to keep bugging at the cord. Yeah. Anyway, there you, there you have it. There's my take on highly exuberant moms that are a little intense about delivery and we don't want a little paw or a tail to get in the way of a tooth and we don't want the demise of a perfectly healthy puppy for no dang reason other than mother nature being a ding dong. Uh, if you do anything else, drop it below and let us know. The more the merrier. Tell us what you do with your overly exuberant moms. Thanks for riding shotgun with me today.